Hello, it's me again, Crazy Rebecca Dances with Pitbulls. Welcome to part two of making a crazy quilt from start to finish. Today we're going to pick fabrics and cut them into manageable sizes so we can get a kraken on our crazy quilt. I've chosen pink. I don't know why, just because. Okay. Got a lot of these fabrics at uh, the Idea Store. This is a silk shirt from a thrift store. Same, same. This is from the Idea Store. Also. So, what about Okay, I said pink, but what I think I really meant was pink and black. Because look, isn't that fabulous? And we could use that as a border because there seems to be quite a bit of it. Okay, so pink and black. I know I paid less than probably $15 for all of this. They sell by the pound. It's like $4 a pound. And we're also going to, oh, where is my, okay, stare at this for a second. I had a dress to cut up. I found it. So see, I got this at the multi-agency yesterday. And look, oh my gosh, that was so pretty. So we could go actually two ways. Maybe we'll do like a pink and a white and a pink and a black. I don't know. See, this is the joy. This is the joy of crazy quilting. You're not really locked into anything. You can always change your mind. Sharp scissors. Mark your scissors so you know which ones are your sharp ones. Ask me how I know that it is disastrous to keep two pairs of scissors by each other and not know which one is which. So these are my sharp scissors with this here thing on it. So this piece is easy because it's already been folded for so long you have a line to cut. You don't want big giant pieces of fabric. Now remember we are working with squares. For, you just do not need this piece of fabric to deal with a square this size. You can only do one at a time, so let's cut two bigger pieces like that on this one. We'll keep another, a third one, but this one let's cut like this. This is gorgeous. I need to go back to the idea store. So, because I am really digging this. I'm going to take this across. We'll save this part for later. Go right up this crease like that. Please do not get hung up on measuring at this point. There is no need. There's no need to measure. You're going to get 
a sense of it like really quick. You should anyway. Let's put those. So now we have two cut. This is gorgeous. Oh, and it's got a scalloped edge. Oh my gosh. So let's take that. This is about 12 inches. Can't really see a fold line on it. And it goes the whole way on this piece. Yes, there is a fold line. I want to preserve this edge, so this will be one piece. Two. Three, and then I always like to cut a smaller set. My rule of thumb is I have to have at least 10 fabrics. 20 is better, 10 will do. Okay, LeMay, I love LeMay, I love the shine. But you have to be careful with it, with your iron. You must use a very low setting. But this is so spectacular for your shiny bits. deal with this dress from the thrift store. The best way to start is cut up a seam on the skirt to the waistline and then cut right along the waistline. Over the seam, you're going to take the whole thing off, this whole skirt. The zipper. Oh, come on. This is kind of stretchy, so I'm not going to use that. This, oh, I see, it's elasticized to keep it up a little bit. Okay, we'll just look at that later. But now you have this piece of fabric. So you want to take the seams off. I have a waste basket right underneath me. seam here. Oh, I wish I had a shirt. Maybe in a future segment we'll deconstruct a shirt or a blouse. Actually, on this other piece, I'm going to leave the hem because we can use it if we want to do a curve on our crazy quilt. Well, it's not that much of a curve, is it? Never mind. Okay. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful fabric. Okay. 
Okay. Got a lot of this. A lot. I just want an edge. We. Oui. <laughs> this is. I think it's lining fabric or something. Five pieces of that. This is a pink lining fabric. Oh, it's already in a nice strip. Excellent. So you can just kind of eyeball it. This is a tablecloth or a runner. Which somebody has cut. It has kind of a plaid pattern to it. This is a silk shirt. Okay, a shirt. Uh, did I bring the iron? I did not. Okay, so let's save this for when I have the iron. Same with that. This I wanted to talk about. This is your, It's a. you need dark too. So yes, it is a burgundy, but it is related to pink. Take the sleeve off of that. So we're going to see the inside of those are dark. So keep that in mind. Okay, for this one, we're just going to take an edge. So Remember how on my blue crazy quilt I had a inspiration fabric? This is my inspiration fabric for this particular project. is a heavier pink. Now you, we can use the back side of this as a pale pink and then your heavy pink. I'm not sure why it has tape on it. I have seen fabric at Goodwill. I've seen it at Salvation Army. This happened to be at the Idea Store. So let's count. I need to make sure this thing is going. 
Yes, it's going. <laughs> nice time for me to check. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I swear I did not plan this, ten. Plus, we have these. So we have enough contrasting fabrics. Now, I also got, if you saw a previous video of mine, some fabrics from India. So I probably will not use this green part. Save that for something else. These are vintage sari fabrics. This can go. That's, yeah, I think that's pink. Is that gonna, I have that marked, so. Oh my gosh. So we may cut, make these like centerpieces, which reminds me I have another thing. Well, we're doing, okay, never mind. We're doing pink. Oh, this is for the Montagues. Okay. So we have, we have enough. We have enough to start. Absolutely awesome. So let's put these in a little. two bundles for right now. One. Now ideally I would be ironing these as I go, but since I didn't bring the iron down yet, we're just going to do this. Okay, so you have your fabrics like this. This is just how I do it. It's They're easy to store. Fold the edge up like that and just roll into a bundle. Now this is a small because I make them. Actually, I usually put 20 pieces, so let's just double this like that.
perfect. So now we have our bundle that we will make our very first block with. But in the next video, we're going to talk about machine sewing versus hand sewing. Also, why you must have an iron. Because whether you hand sew or you machine sew, so you need an iron handy right where you can get it to iron your seams. So, please come back for part three. This thing is going to move along quickly and it's going to be so much fun.